uh, oriented architecture experts, right? So these are architects who understand how the services will, uh, will be broken down. Uh, but you have also all of this infrastructure that will, will have to support your SOA implementation. So you've heard about all these things, enterprise service bus. So within this SOA center of excellence, you will need to have smaller centers of excellence around each one of the specific components which will make up your SOA infrastructure. Now, again, one need to have all of them at once, but you will need, ha need to have architectural resources that understand how to deploy each one of these components uh, properly, how to scale it. For instance, enterprise service bus, you know, depending on a vendor, has its own kinks. Again, very key component in SOA implementation. You will need to have somebody within your SOA center of excellence on the team or even its own center of excellence that uh, has folks that understand that, that product very well or that set of products very well. Governance, again, there's products and processes that are involved in governance. You will need to have an expert on your team that understands this. Business process management, it's implemented by different software vendors. You know, it's a software component, has distinctly different patterns than, let's say, messaging infrastructure or an enterprise service bus from architectural perspective, from deployment, implementation perspective. So you will need to have somebody on your team who understands that deeply if you are at that level where you're implementing business process management. So you need to form a center of excellence around this product. Uh, canonical models, very often overlooked uh, piece of SOA. You know, these are industry standard XML models, essentially interfaces to your services uh, that provide the abstraction layer when you call a service. Uh, there are a lot of industry standards. Again, we'll need people on your team who understand these industry standards, who understand XML very well, schemas, and perhaps contribute back to the community. But again, somebody, depending on how many canonical models you're using in your enterprise, uh, you, know, you, will, you will staff up that uh, team accordingly. Security, uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Portals, message-oriented middleware. Again, a very key and often overlooked piece of uh, service-oriented architecture. This is your MQs. You know, your messaging uh, has to be very robust, uh, you're very highly available, you know, because it will carry a lot of the data in the SOA world. So again, you would want somebody on your team who understands this very, very well. And again, it's a special kind of animal uh, you know, people without a lot of hands-on experience won't be able to uh, at least implement it as fast. So. And last but not least is business rules engine. A core uh, SOA component of your SOA infrastructure, again, has its own behavioral patterns, has its, has its own deployment patterns. Uh, we'll need to have somebody on the team. Again, just to underscore, you won't have all of these to start with. Perhaps you will just have service-oriented architecture, which is just the architecture component, and enterprise service bus, and perhaps uh, middle, uh, message-oriented middleware center of excellence. But at least you need to start building skill sets and resources, you know, internal or external, around each one of these disciplines to be successful. Because once you deploy your SOA as a mission-critical application in your enterprise, you, know, you will get a lot of calls, right? Because this is not for fun anymore. This is really how the business will run you know, most of their software. And we, you know, we learned that the hard way. So let's talk about, you know, I'm, I'm picking one of these uh, centers of excellence, canonical models. And, you know, I already said that it's pretty often overlooked um, component of SOA. Uh, I'm sure you guys heard a lot about domain-driven design. You know, this is really a data representation of your enterprise. This is how the services uh, communicate it, their payloads to, um, you know, the requesting entities, really. This is your XML representation. Um, and it's, it's the, it, it provides really that common abstraction layer that you need uh, for the clients of SOA uh, to be abstracted away from an implementation. Uh, very often what we see is they're either bottom-up Java uh, to XML type of uh, representations, very often homegrown representations. And, you know, we kind of, we push our clients to adopt an industry standard. Obviously, is, you know, number one reason is your enterprise is not that unique. Uh, you know, somebody out there is already doing some of this stuff. I mean, we'll talk a little bit later about service domains. You know, we have finance domain, we have product domain, you know, customer, so enterprise is broken into multiple domains. You know, at least each one of these domains will have a canonical model attached to it. And, you know, we can bet any money that Somebody out there, somebody, uh, you know, some organizational body is already doing XML work or canonical model work around this particular domain. So, again, I encourage my customers and encourage you guys to go out before you start kind of rolling your own 